Hello everybody, Dark Skeleton here, and today I'd like to try to show you how to draft Priest better in Arena. Um, specifically, we're going to do Priest today because that's my daily quest. And by the end of this video, we're going to have covered all of the cards that I go through, all the choices I make, and then we'll jump to when I actually complete the Arena series and we'll see how it turned out. So let's go ahead and pick Priest I here. Let you down. That's the first step, obviously, to playing Priest in Arena. So here, our first choices are Upgraded Repair Bot, Wormrest Agent, and Injured Ca uh, Cavaldio. If you play Priest in Constructed right now, you know that Wormrest Agent is a really solid minion for playing Dragon Priest. And uh, the thing about that is, though, trying to draft cards in Arena for a very specific deck like Mech or Dragon decks is kind of faulty because you never know what you're going to get. You might not get any good dragons, or you might not even get enough dragons to really justify picking this card. So really, the same thing applies here for the upgraded repair bot and its mech effect. So comparing a 5-5 mech for 5 mana versus a 1-4 2 drop. And if you look at it just from pure stats, you have uh, the upgraded repair bot, I would say, is the optimal pick there. Now, you could also choose the Injured Cavaldier, which is a 1-mana, uh, 2-4, but it's really a 2-1 because you have to heal it up. Of all the classes where um, Injured Cavaldier would be okay in, Priest is probably at the top of the list because they have the easiest time uh, picking the card and uh, bringing it up to speed. So you can definitely turn one, play this, and then heal it on turn two, but that's not really ideal because that limits your two drops. So we're going to go ahead and take the upgraded repair bot. So on this pick, we have captured Yormingar, which is a decent high cost minion with a lot of attack, uh, a lot of health and some attack, which is good for Priest. You want high health minions because that lets you heal them. And Mad Bomber, which is an excellent two drop. Um, I would say specifically because Mad Bomber is so good at countering so much of the arena meta right now, the aggressive one drops, or even sometimes you can snipe a two drop, I'm going to actually grab Mad Bomber. I do have some faith in that card. Although the captured Yormingar is also a pretty decent pick there. Here we have Gadget Sand Jouster, Mech Warper, or Thought Steel. Mech Warper, of course, has the synergy with the upgraded repair bot, so it's not out of the question. Thought Steel allows you to draw extra cards, so this is actually um, a little bit tricky. Uh, I think I would generally say Thought Steel is still the better pick. It's too soon to really go for max synergy. This might be the only other mech we get in the entire set, so I'm going to grab Thought Steel. Okay, here we have Dragon Ling Mechanic, which is pretty awful. Low stats for 4 mana. Oh, shit. Oh, god damn it. That was such a mistake. I meant to pick the Temple Enforcer. Um, when you're drafting Arena, be sure that you click when you are sure that you're ready to pick that card. Okay. <laughs> That's pretty funny, I gotta admit. Alright. Mind Vision, Lance Carrier, or Twilight Whelp. Um, Twilight Whelp, once again, it's a Dragon Synergy cards, but we don't have any other dragons, and that is pretty awful on its own. Lance Carrier is okay. Mind Vision is pretty mediocre, so I think we actually go with the Lance Carrier here. Okay, out of these cards, War Golem is just not great for its mana cost. Light Spawn is solid in Arena because it's a 5-5, even though it does have the weakness of uh, losing attack as it loses health. And Dark Cultist is also pretty solid. I think between the cards, though, uh, Dark Cultist has a slight edge over Light Spawn. Okay. Uh, Sinjin Shieldmaster is a solid 4-drop. Magma Rager is awful because it has 1 HP. You'll just lose it to hero powers all the time. And Holy Smite is actually reasonable removal. But I think, all in all, a Sinjin Shieldmaster is just really solid. Especially for priests that can heal it back up. Dark Iron Dwarf is a very, very solid card in general because decent stats, but the plus 2 attack does matter. Freezing a character is actually not bad in Arena. Uh, you'll see people take Frost Elemental. Um, and it's actually not bad at all if you're going to try to set up lethal by denying your opponent the ability to make trades. And Blood Sail Vader is better in other classes, but here it's just a 2-3, so we're going to take the Dark Iron Dwarf. Okay, Shrinkmeister is uh, reasonable, but it's not amazing without cards like Cabal Shadow Priest. It's usually in regular Priest decks more of a combo card. But it's actually not a bad pick here, because you can just use it to basically heal a minion for two, or prevent it from dying. Silverhand Knight is generally a pretty solid card in Arena as well, and Lowly Squire is on the low end. 
So, Shrinkmeister versus Silverhand Knight. Um, I would say probably the Silverhand Knight, but it's close. Okay, Gadget Sand Auctioneer is just nowhere near as good as it used to be, and we have no spells yet, so it's not the pick here. Pint Size Summoner is mediocre. Murloc Tidecaller is a Murloc Synergy card, so neither of those cards are any good. I don't want to pick the Pint Size Summoner, but it's the best of the three options, to be honest. And it's a two drop, so. Uh, making sure you have enough two drops is very important in Arena. Okay, Master Spell, Warm Rest Agent, or Coliseum Manager. Um, Warm Rest Agent, same problems as we talked about earlier. Master Spell is uh, not abysmal, but there usually isn't too many uh, good silence targets in Arena. It's not like Constructed where everybody has four copies of Piloted Shredder. And Coliseum Manager is actually pretty good, um, specifically in Arena, because you can continually get more and more value out of it. Um, if you watch some of Trump's videos, you'll notice that he does sometimes abuse the Coliseum Manager and replay it two or three times. The Inspire effect, specifically for Arena, where you can kind of afford to play it slowly and hold off on your hero power, um, actually does benefit the Coliseum Manager. So it's a solid card. Okay, Mech Warper, Undertaker, or Nightblade. Nightblade, we're not trying to rush the opponent down generally in Arena, and those stats are just too weak to justify the mana cost. Undertaker requires death rattle effects, and I don't think we even have any yet, so that's not even a contender. And Mech Warper does have this energy with upgraded repair bot, so we're definitely taking it forward. Um, Gentleman Attendee, obviously really bad because that's 1 HP. Acidic Swamp Use is actually pretty reasonable. Uh, there's lots of Paladins in Arena, and that can snipe a true silver champion, which is good. Uh, Light Spawn is also pretty good in Arena. Uh, between these two cards, which would I generally go for? Whew. Well, um, Paladin is the number one win rate, uh, if you go glance at the data, specifically because of cards like Murloc Knight. Um, so trying to have an answer to that is not a bad idea. We have one, two, three three, four, two drops, of which only three really count, because you don't want to play Light Lance Carrier off the bat. So, more two drops is not out of the question. Um, and we don't really have any cards to synergize with Light Spawn, so although it's close, I'm going to take the Ooze. So here we have North Sea Kraken, which is an excellent late game arena card. Uh, specifically, I think they added it to the game, so it could be drafted in arena. Uh, Tournament Medic is okay, but its attack is really weak. And Holy Nova is just a great board clear, so it's between Holy Nova and North Sea Kraken. I would say, um, it's tough, but for right now, I think I'm going to grab the Holy Nova. Uh, just specifically because having a board clear is pretty important, and a lot of people do like to play uh, with a lot of minions on the board. Okay, so Light Warden Convert or Injured Blade Master. None of these are particularly great. Uh, they'd be much better. These two would be much better if I had, say, a Circle of Healing. Um, Light Warden, you'd much rather have the uh, Light of the Naru, which heals and then gives you a Light Warden. Convert is not bad, but I think out of the cards, Injured Blade Master is the best because you can always heal it to a 4 5 on turn 4 if you need to. Convert might be a little bit too slow and there's no guarantee that the opponent is necessarily going to actually have a really good minion to convert so you might be hanging on to that as a dead card for a while so we'll grab into play master okay silence loot hoarder novice engineer uh silence is kind of overrated in arena and between these two cards you're almost guaranteed to get the jaw card so i'm going to take the one with more attack loot hoarder Dread Corsair is weak in this deck because there's no weapons. Micro Machine and Harvest Golem have the upgraded Repair Bot Synergy. And I think in this case, I do like the Harvest Golem better, specifically because it's more of a control card. And uh, it will be a little bit more sticky to guarantee that that... So I think it fits this deck a little bit better. Okay, Worgen, Raging Worgen is not bad. Worgen Infiltrator is actually really good. And Tournament Matic is okay, but probably don't need it because our hero power already heals. So Worgen Infiltrator is going to be the pick here. The reason for that is that if you can churn one a Worgen Infiltrator, it's a really solid answer to most, well, a good chunk of two drops that your opponent can play on the board. And if you deny your opponent the ability to make a two drop play, and then you play your own two drop, you're really far ahead at that point already. So the the threat of the Worgen Infiltrator's two damage is a big deal, so we're actually going to grab that. It's a nice arena card. Here we can grab an Acolyte of Pain if we want more card draw, which isn't totally out of the question, but there's really nothing to synergize with that. 
Lance Carrier can make Worgen Infiltrator even better. Um, but there's only one Worgen Infiltrator, so that's not something we really want to rely on. And Murloc Raider is just weak in general. So, out of all these cards, I'd say Acolyte of Pain would be a lot better if we had some buffs like Valen's Chosen. But I'm just kind of seeing it as Cycle card right now. I like the idea of Lance Carrier better for this particular moment in time. Master Swordsmith is weak because you can't really rely on its effect to go off more than once. Mana Wraith is not really going to synergize with this deck at all. And sometimes it can kind of affect your opponent a little bit, but I don't think it's worth taking. Light of the Norvio, on the other hand, is a nice heal that also gets you a minion, so we'll go ahead and grab that. We're kind of weak on late game right now, so we need to try grabbing some more of that. Frigid Snowballed would be better if we had more spells, but the only damage spell is Holy Nova. And in that case, we're going to grab Spectral Knight. So Flash Heal, Mind Blast, or Voodoo Doctor, none of these are really good for Arena. Um, I'm going to go ahead and grab, I guess I might say the Flash Heal, to be honest. Or would the Voodoo Doctor be better? Let's see here. Mm, you know, I don't see many targets where the 5 health is really going to come into fruition there. The Voodoo Doctor might actually be better. Like, there's a lot of things I could heal for 2, but not much that I could heal for 5. I mean, you can't even heal the Spectral Knight. Um, in that case, I'm actually going to grab the Voodoo Doctor. Mind Blast? Eh, you're not so much keen on trying to finish your opponent off, necessarily. Though, that is actually an option here. I should think about that. Because this deck so far has almost no late game. That's what it's really weak on. So it might not really have the going power to actually compete with the late game decks. I really wish I didn't accidentally click on Dragonling Mechanic. The Tempo Enforcer would have been much better. Um, I think we're going to go with the Voodoo Doctor. It can also be used as a one drop if you want to play it like that. And you have Lance Carrier to kill any two drop that gets played. So, I think it's a bit more versatile than that, and Mind Blast is just too aggressive. I don't think this deck can rush people. I just need to get more late game. Okay, out of these three cards, I would say Argent Horse Rider, probably best for control. Murloc, no real synergy there. So, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go with the Charge Divine Shield. It's actually really nice. Okay, here we're gonna go with Draconid Crusher. We definitely need more late game. And if we do manage to get our opponent to 15 HP, this can be a deadly finisher. It's actually pretty good in a card. Um, here we can go for more card draw, or Shattered Sun Cleric, or even a Tinkertown Technician. We only have... Um, looks like three different mechs in this deck so far. Which means some of the time Tinkertown Technician could get value. Is it worth it, though? Um... It's kind of a tough call. Guaranteed plus one plus one, or plus one plus one that makes this a four four, and also gives you a spare part to the hand. Because this is specifically turn two and turn three, I still think it's worth going with the Shattered Sun Cleric. Although the Tinker Town Technician, I did have to think about that. Here the pick is going to be Cult Master because we're weak on card draw and we have a lot of early game. So likely we're going to need to trade our minions in to hold board control and this will make sure we at least have enough card draw to pull us into the late game. Uh, Injured Calvadir is not terrible. Uh, Spawn of Shadows is actually an option and Grim Patron is... Uh, well, there's nothing to really combo it with so it's actually pretty weak. Injured Cavalier, if we had Circle of Healing, might be an option. But I'm actually going to go with the sh Spawn of Shadows here. Uh, it might get to the point in this matchup where we just run out of steam and we need as much damage to the enemy hero as we can get. So Spawn of Shadows will actually be pretty good in many circumstances. Here, um, Injured Blade Master is pretty good. Upgraded Repair Bot is not out of the question. You can also use Upgraded Repair Bot with Upgraded Repair Bot. Um... Now, do I want to sit around and start healing this, or do I want to try to get a tempo mech play going? I'm actually kind of feeling the upgraded repair bot by a small margin. I mean, it's still a 5-5 at the end of the day, and this is a 4-3 that needs to be healed for it to really work. And Jeeves is uh, not really going to come into play enough, so I'm, I'm going to go with the upgraded repair bot. 
but Injured Blade Master is also not a bad option. Okay, Circle of Healing uh, is potentially pretty okay, but is it too fast of a card? Injured Blade Master does go really nicely with it, but what else would work? Um, I think I'm actually going to have to pass in the Circle of Healing. It's a great card in Constructed Priest, but there's just not really enough to synergize with it. No Northshire Clerics, and I'm afraid that this will re result in running out of cards, so I'm going to go for another solid 4-drop. Okay, and final card here, Arcanai Soul Priest is actually pretty good. Master Spell is okay, and Coliseum Manager, we have enough 3 drops. So I think we're going to go ahead and grab the 4-drop Arcanai Soul Priest. Have a decent, pretty early game curve. It's definitely not a control deck, but we will try to fight for board control. I don't think this is the greatest of decks, and it definitely would have been a little bit better if it wasn't Dragon League Mechanic, but instead Tempo Enforcer. But we're going to go ahead and give this a shot. So let's see how it turns out. So before we get to the final part of the video where I'm going to show you the results of this arena run, I'd like to highlight a few areas of the arena. So as I believe I mentioned in the introduction where we were drafting, um, I took Spawn of Shadows specifically because it can be a more aggressive card that can really put pressure on your opponents. And here you can see one instance of that. When I Hero Power with the Spawn of Shadows combined with the Arcanai Soul Priest, I can deal 6 extra damage in addition to just hitting the face with the Arcanai Soul Priest. And although the Rogue had previously sprinted for card draw and clearly has card advantage over me, the very fact that I have this damage on board puts huge pressure on my opponent. And if he cannot remove the cards from my field or set up a huge taunt or heal himself then he is effectively dead here despite having massive card advantage and a lot of people in arena right now as they go and play through the meta they draft for the most controlling and I would say bringing you into late game type of cards cards like piloted shredder cards that have divine shield nice taunts Occasionally, you'll see classes that will pick up heal, especially Paladin, uh, with Guardian of Kings, for instance. And that's all well and good. It's a fine strategy, and it wins for a lot of people. But sometimes, you get a deck that just needs to be more aggressive. And in this case, I'm actually able to put enough pressure onto this rogue to basically finish him off, regardless of what he can do. So, yes, he did basically make the best play he possibly could from his hand, being able to remove my Arcanai Soul Priest. That's huge. And that is able to keep him alive for a churn. However, Spawn of Shadows puts out 4 extra damage a churn. His field is weak to my Spawn of Shadows and the Argent Horse Rider I have in my hand, which, as I mentioned, is a very, very good removal piece, being able to kill a minion and still have a 2-1. So here it's not going to be very difficult to finish him off at all. I just need to clear his board play more minions, and set more things for him to have to fight to remove. No matter how many cards you have in the hand, if you can't come back from a board state, you're still going to be finished in the end. And the Spawn of Shadows, even if you have a taunt, he's still going to be putting on 4 extra damage a turn, which is massive. Now I did do a misplay here, I definitely should have actually played the Light of the Naru far before I used Spawn of Shadows. Um, wasn't thinking about it in the moment, but that does actually matter. Well, it should matter, because that would have been, I believe, a 3-2 Light Warden. No, 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 a 5-2 Light Warden instead of a 1-2. 4 attack is a big difference. So try not to make that mistake. If you're going to be playing Light Wardens at Holy Champions, always get them out on the field before you heal. But you can see here, he had no response to that, and despite his card advantage, I was able to steal a win. To go back to the point about how people draft very controlling cards in Arena, generally speaking, the reason they do that, of course, is because Arena is a slower game, but that does not necessarily mean that you have to play defensively and trade 100% of the time. Here, looking at the field, he set things up so that it would be very difficult for me to trade and actually still win this game. However, I have enough damage in hand that I can actually put a massive amount of pressure on him. I don't think I'd be able to win the game in the long run because he has high quality cards like piloted shredder and who knows what he's got in his hand but i know that if i do this play it sets up a turn to lethal what i would lose to hands down would be a flame strike that would be an instant loss but if i took the other route and he had flame strike i'd probably lose either way 
So in this case, you just have to determine if it's best to just go for the kill. It's something that a lot of people on Arena don't do nearly enough. They play way too defensively, and then they lose the game because the other person just puts all the pressure on him that he can. If you have extra cards in the hand, it doesn't matter if you're dead. So here he was going up against a Paladin, and he played one of the best win more cards, Mukla's Champion, which gives a plus one plus one banana to every single minion on your side of the field, besides Muk uh, Mukla's Champion, each time you use your hero power. If this thing lives more than once on a field like this, I'd be pretty much guaranteed to lose. So here you're going to see some of the reasons why Argent Horse Rider and Dark Iron Dwarf are very solid picks in Arena. Being able to remove things from the hand is important if you get in situations like this, so being able to remove that Mukla's Champion was the only reason I ended up winning this match. Well played. The victory is yours. So here's an example of where this deck really falls apart. As you noticed in the uh, intro where we drafted the deck out, there was very, very little late game in the deck. In fact, this Draconid Crusher was the only six drop or more in the deck. I got myself into a situation against this mage where he had card advantage on me and also had better quality cards on me. So here I can see that, yes, by playing the Draconid Crusher and buffing it to an eight attack minion, I can defeat it in a one-on-one -on -one trade, even if he uses his hero power to buff his Cavaldier Raider. However, the moment he plays something else from the hand, I know I'm finished simply because I do not have any other high-end cards to answer his hand size. So here is the final game that I played for this arena series. I'm at five wins at the moment, and I'm going up against a shaman who clearly has a very, very high quality deck. Having two fire elementals is great for regaining the board, and the weapon also helps as well. So I'm looking at his hand, I'm looking at the quality of his cards, his field that just overwhelms mine, doesn't give me any good trades. And this is a situation where I feel that the only play I can make is to try to go face and hope that he has no answer to this. Theoretically, after counting up the damage, I did have lethal here, even if he made trades with his fire elementals. However, this is going up against a champion, or rather a shaman, who has just simply better cards than me. Uh, Feral Spirits, Argent Horse Rider, these are almost cards, or in the case of the spirits, are cards that you would just simply see in Constructed. So by playing those cards out... Um, he is actually able to make trades here and keep himself alive for another turn. Now unfortunately, by making the trades, he's actually put himself in a situation where I literally have to top deck. I think, personally, killing the, um, the ticket master there, who bounces back to my hand, was a very smart move because I was actually planning on using it to kill a pharaoh spirit and then healing up. But drawing into the injured blade master is definitely the nail in my coffin here. Yes, I can theoretically try to keep drawing cards that might help me out. A Holy Nova would be very good, as it is a top-tier pick in Arena. However, you're going to see here that he does, in fact, have the Lightning Storm, which was one of the weaknesses for this deck. When you play a pure minion deck that's very low curving, AoEs like a Lightning Storm or a Flame Strike will completely shut you down. I got lucky going against the mages earlier because they didn't have it at the right time, but this shaman did completely shut me out here. Alright everybody, so I got 5 wins with that arena run, which was okay given that the deck was not particularly good. Um, so what happened was that basically I just ran into decks that had better quality of cards. You can look at this list, and you can see that really there wasn't a lot that was strong going for it. Priest is not a deck that's known for being particularly aggressive. Although, uh, shoot, what's that card called? The Spawn of Shadows was able to come into play a couple times, and actually was pretty helpful um, to make up for the fact that the deck just can't compete in card advantage very well. Um, as, uh, aside from that, you just look at the cards, and we weren't offered many good ones. There are a lot of pretty mediocre cards in here. Voodoo Doctor, for one. Light of the Naru isn't really great for Arena. Lance Carriers don't really synergize with Priest. And yeah, a lot of mediocre cards. And then the Dragonling Mechanic mistake. What, it did matter. The Dragonling Mechanic wasn't useless, but probably having a Temple Enforcer would have overall been better. So, I did what I could with the deck. 
I think in general, I still stand by the choices I made. It was just a very weak offering of cards this time around. When you go up against decks that have piloted shredders, fire elementals, uh, flame tongue totems, the guy who beat me in the end was a shaman. Oh, yeah, lightning storm. That, that, that part hurt too. And, um, uh, yeah, just classes with stronger cards overall. You can only do so much if you get a bad deck in Arena. And Five Wins is still respectable, I think. So, be, in order to make that happen, I basically had to rush people down. And sometimes it worked out. Sometimes, even though they had way more cards than me, I was just able to beat them in before they could clear all my minions. And that's one of the advantages of having a kind of even curve where you can just tempo out really well. That's the only thing that was saving this stack to get to five wins, honestly. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Let me know what you think, and I will probably be back with another video if people like this kind of thing, and hopefully next time we get better cards, maybe choose a higher win rate class, and we can do a good job with Arena. So thank you for watching. Let's go ahead and take a look at whatever rewards I happen to get. If you don't know, when you get to 8 wins, you get a higher chance of getting a golden card. But here, it's probably just going to roughly break even with gold. So, uh, 50 extra gold in a pack. So, yeah. One arena, made 50 gold, finished the daily quest. Not too bad. Oh, apparently TGT is out. All right, two rares, mediocre. Right, yeah. Okay, there you go, guys. So... Once again, let me know what you think. I've been Dark Skeleton. I hope you found this at least fairly educational. And I'll see you in my next video.